chapter 19, starting in uh, verse 16. Let's all stand. Yeah. Amen. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, it says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Yeah. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. That's about the word. Yeah. Our dear and heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and thank you for this this night you, that you we, we've come here to worship you and, and to study your word and put it in our hearts and our minds the wisdom and the knowledge that's in your word. And forgive us of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now that we've heard this story uh, bunches of times, but one thing I wanted to you know kind of bring out is you know like several angles, if you would several angles to look at. And uh, in, in one angle that uh, you could uh, look at, now first of all, this young man in verse 16 says, uh, Good master, what thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now, this sounds like a, a, you know, a guy who's asking a, a perfectly perfectly logical question. I mean, we would all like to have eternal life. Amen. Now then, he says in verse 18, I mean, no, <coughs> verse 17, he says, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Yeah. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So, here he's telling me, you know, he's telling him, there is none good but one, that is God. You know, he's telling, essentially telling him that everyone has sinned. There is none perfect, no, not one. That's right. You know. Okay, but that aside in this verse, but aside, but if you will enter into life, keep the commandments the commandments. So then he asks, which? Which commandments should I follow? Well, of course, you should follow them all. You know? I mean, if you break one commandment, you might as well break them all because if we're all have sinned and come to the shore of the glory of God. Amen. Without, you know, with the uh, commandments, uh, well, let's turn into Romans 3. Just a little, you know, uh, just a little detour. Romans 3. <clears throat> okay, Romans 3 in verse 19. It says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Yeah. But now, well, in verse 21, it talks about the manifestation. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And of course, 
this righteousness of God without the law being manifest is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, with that uh, in mind, uh, with that, you know, like in your mind, as it were, uh, within this angle, as it were. Okay, now, he says, uh, keep the commandments. In verse 17, if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said, he said unto him, which, as in which commandments exactly? Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Now notice that Jesus only gave him six of those commandments. Now those six of those commandments don't have anything really to do with God. You know? So, but if you look in, uh, in uh, you know, the book of, uh, oh, there's two places uh, within the Bible that uh, talks about uh, the Ten Commandments. Um, we'll, we'll get there eventually. It says, um, okay, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet. So far this guy's test to himself, uh, he's, he's a good you know, uh, you know. So he's, you know, he's, he's wanting to know what, what he lacks here. So uh, he's, he's looking for perfection now, you know. He's, He's in his mind, you know, perfect because he's followed all these commandments throughout his entire lifetime. So then in uh, verse 21 it says, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, if thou wilt be perfect, now then, if you don't depend on anything but yourself, and you don't need anything, if you don't need to depend on anything, then go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. If you'll be perfect, if you're going to, you know, like, be as perfect as you say you are, you know, you've lived the times, you've never done wrong, you've never sinned in your entire life, if you are not dependent on anything. Just go and sell everything you have and you know your treasures in heaven and come and follow me. But when this young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Verse 23 it says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily, ver uh, verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter to the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. Let's go into the Ten Commandments here in uh, Exodus, chapter 20. Now then, starting in uh, verse 12, Exodus chapter 20, starting in verse 12, these are the commandments that, uh, that Jesus actually told this young man you know, that, that would, you know, get them by, as it were. He said, honor, in verse 12, honor thy father and thy mother, thy 
days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt commit Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, thou, oh, nor his maidservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now then, but before all of this, there's the other four commandments. And those four commandments are most, most important. As we, you know, go on to verse 1 in chapter 20, it says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment. Thou shalt not have no thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now then, be the young man. I mean, without God, you know, there's it's absolutely useless. Now then, uh, uh, the uh, the number two commandment is thou shalt not make in, unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So then, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And then remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it Thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor uh, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The focus here about the Ten Commandments is that you have to follow God in all His commandments. Now then, coming back to this, uh, to this young man, it says in verse 21, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me now then going back to Romans chapter 3 chapter 3 of Romans verse 10 it says as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not the one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre with their tongues they have used to deceive. The poison of, of asps is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the ways of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. 
Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Witnessed by the law and the prophets. This is this is uh, you know gone throughout the entire Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, of one who is going to come to life, being manifested. It says, without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, which is Jesus Christ. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Jesus is the person to justify another man's sin. <clears throat> a guy who, uh, who's, you know, going through life, he's, you know, it's like there's none righteous, no, not one. He is unjustified. There's no way in the world to be justified other than in Christ. Christ is the justifier. We have to believe in him. We have to rely on him to get to heaven. It says, where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is... One God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. And as, as, it, uh, as it says, I can't remember exactly where it says, that the, the law is a schoolmaster. And uh, we, we should rely on the law because the law reminds us that we are sinners. And uh, you know, without you know, without the law, we couldn't know that we're, we're, we're sinners. Mm -hmm. Now, the ironic thing about uh, about this young man that was in uh, chapter 19, who was asking, uh, "What may I have, you know, to have, you know, to have eternal life?" He was not, you know, he was not even three feet from the very person who could actually save his life. And this was ironic. You know, ironic to me, you know. I mean, it's like, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, he was talking right at his Savior, saying, how could I have eternal life? And so Jesus, you know, told them, um, you know, just, uh, you know, follow the commandments. And so this guy says, well, I've done this throughout my entire lifetime. You know, I'm, I'm near perfect, you know. What, what life is I? And so then he says, go sell everything that you have and follow me. And he couldn't do that. Three feet away from him. It's like having a life raft. You know, after you fell off of a boat in the middle of the ocean, you're wondering, oh, I need a life raft. Somebody throws you a life raft, you know, and, and you're looking at this life raft, you know, that's about three feet away, and all you got to do is just kind of swing toward it, get in it, and, you know, you're, you're hauled out of there. But the guy says, what must I do to have eternal life here? Three feet away. How far are you? That's all.
Amen. <laughs> <laughs>